Okay. Hello. Good morning, everybody. So, yeah. So I'm processing a lot of stuff right now. And it's really quite interesting, the journey that I'm going through on the Jilly Juice. Because if you were to ask me four years ago, would I be talking about what I've been talking about the last couple of days? I would say, are you fucking kidding me? Okay. I probably would. No one would ask me this because it would be speed like it would be too. Um, I don't know. Taboo. You would never ask somebody, you know, anything like what we've been talking about the last couple of days. So, yeah, I've been processing a lot. <laughs> and no, it, it hasn't been super easy, but it it's like but it's like a relief. I'm not saying it was I mean, nothing is ever easy. You would talk about stuff that is so taboo like we've been talking about but but it makes me understand why we are dealing with so many things in the media why we are experiencing uh these lockdowns and this COVID 19 the masks the social distancing people are committing suicide people are self-destructing because of it and and then it reminds me like just and then yes the whole mk ultra and all that and then why it is that i made sure that I figured out how to prove my theories without having to go get a college degree to do it. All I had to do was go find the information from academia and from the government and substantiate my theories that way without having to go through five years of education and a credential like, oh yeah, I have a credential in biochemistry. Um, I can only talk about what they tell me to talk about in academia, but I can't have my own thesis. If I do have a thesis, it better be in align with in alignment with you know the professors and with the college. And so that's why university education is so dangerous. Because once you figure out what's going on, you're too indebted, you're too invested to have any line of thought outside of their their agenda, their motto, whatever it is. And and so when you think about academia, when you think about um, university education, what is this research and development? What is this research and development? What are all these m mind, uh, um, brain, mind, whatever uh, types of uh, research and development studies, you know, psychotherapy, psychology, psychiatry, and then you see the research and development in biotechnology. What the heck are they researching. Oh, they're researching how to cure cancer, how to stop and cure my allergies and 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 have new protocols and implants when something breaks down. And, you know, that's yeah, that's the party line. That's what brings people into these colleges is that they want to be the next best thing to slice bread. They want to have the next app. They want to have the next invention of some kind of of implant to put in your body to control shit. Oh, that's, yes, Lisa. Oh, yeah, that's exactly. Oh, yeah, and indoctr indoctrination, yes. But this is even more than that, Lisa. It goes beyond indoctrination and, and mind control. It goes into it goes into allowing and normalizing and, and uh, justifying deviant sexual behavior. Okay? So I'm again, I'm gonna go back to my childhood again. You know, my mother worked with, she specialized with incest survivors. She specialized with perpetrators of crime. Okay, my sister and I went through some hell under that household. Yes, I had thoughts and feelings as a child that I probably shouldn't have had, but I had them. Did I act out on them? I'm sure I went through my phases in my 20s, okay, in my 30s, whatever. But luckily, thank God, I survived. I survived those that programming. I didn't end up in the porn industry. I didn't end up like, you know, in prostitution. I didn't end up as a, a human trafficked. Thank God I survived that shit. Because some people I've seen have gone into, like Jenna Jameson, she said she was she trafficked as a, as a child. And now she's in the, you know, she's she's been in the porn industry, right? People are coming out. If you're in the porn industry, they've been in like the drugs and all this other stuff. They're coming out with what they went through. I mean, you're seeing some stars are going like crazy right now because they've been, they're finally, their programming has glitched and they are acting out. Okay. 
So, so my mother went to, wow, Lisa. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So my mother, my mother also has, was abused. Okay. And so that's what gave me, that's what's like, okay, that's what gave me the license to give her some kind of forgiveness because, you know, oh, well, she was, she was abused. So, you know, she's just acting out her whatever and, and, and that's okay and whatever. And so it, 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 I forgave her for all the stupid shit. But then I'm like, when I actually seen the playbook on how to uh, create an undetectable mind control victim, and then you see just all the different bullet points on how to pick your victim on what you do, you break their mind apart, you, you know, you do isolation, you induce fear, you, I mean, total obedience, compliance, all that, you know, that playbook that I have, those little screenshots, that's exactly not every single thing. Well, maybe probably I would say, I guess in some way or another, those were the, the, those are the things. So, so when you look at academia, you look at what academia, what they're doing. Okay. They are normalizing. And that's why you're seeing all of the protests out there. That's why you're seeing finally people are coming out and saying, and why you're seeing so much an uptick of pedophiles. Now I don't, have any kind of like wanting justice okay i don't have any anger towards them but but you have to understand why indefinite life and why jilly juice has been so attacked because when you are promoting indefinite life you're taking away all of the things that make money the porn industry the sex industry the drugs the alcohol all the things that the system relies on you guys to be addicted to that's all going to the wayside. Like I can do occasional, I can drink occasionally, but I had to go in and recalibrate my body and go through that process. But I don't want to drink because I don't want to go through that recalibration process. But I mean, I'm not like going after and looking for sex and it's not something that I have to have and I could take it or leave it. But I definitely, I'm in a marriage, so I keep things on an even keel. But the, you know, so all the things that are so deviant in our society will go to the wayside when you're on the J-juice, okay? And so then it's just like, uh, if, if those want to partake in those deviant sexual activities like pedophilia and other types of stuff, something like J-juice would challenge it, okay? And when there are people that are making a lot of money off of human trafficking, child trafficking and porn and, and alcohol and drugs, you know, something like J juice, you know, would definitely, like I said, challenge it. And that's why you're seeing so many people are, are, are self-destructing too, because when, when you're being mind controlled with the, with the mind and then with the body with biochemistry and biotechnology, um, you're on a death trajectory and DNC will eventually come out in some way, shape or form. And yes, you know, uh, death is the outcome. And so it's, and so J juice is like, like the complete opposite of that. And so if we understand that DNC and, um, the drugs and the alcohol and all the different crazy things that we're protesting against is because of a body that's on a death trajectory, maybe we can change it with the J juice. If people face their demons, like I'm facing my demons, I'm facing my demons. It's not freaking easy facing the demons, but I'm telling you, you know, university from back in the eighties, they were already experimenting, but they're probably experimenting with the, with, with the whole thing with pedophilia and incest and all that stuff way back, even in the Roman days. I mean, this thing with, with, with sexual deviancy has been going on for centuries. It's just that every hundred years, a new generation crops up every hundred years. They have new ways of making it undetectable or making it, um, I don't know, part of the mainstream until people start rebelling and then it goes back underground again. So look, we're, we're all at home right now. We're all social distancing. We're all staying away from each other. So now this, this, this network will be able to even flourish even more because everyone's at home and protesting and not paying attention to their kids and their kids are on social media and then they are, their, their, their maturity is being accelerated because of the antibodies in the vaccines, yes, in the prescription drugs, um, also in the food supply, and then they're not, their bodies are not being 
balanced out correctly with the right chemistry. So then they start having these feelings at an earlier age and then they attract pedophiles. And that's why you're seeing now pedophiles not realizing or not knowing the difference between a young girl and an older girl because it's like it doesn't even matter anymore. And academia is normalizing it. That's why they're trying to lower the age because the sooner that you die and the more, the faster you mature, they have to adjust the age for lifespan. I don't say they have to, but that's what they want to do. And then you're seeing, you know, now you're seeing like Hollywood and you're seeing Tom Hanks, which I thought Tom Hanks was an awesome dude, I swear. I was like, I never hear anything about Tom Hanks. What the hell is that? And then all of a sudden this year, Tom Hanks is like in the news and he's ran away to Greece because, yeah, he's part of that whole network. Okay. And so that's what, so what triggered all this is like, I'm thinking like the eighties, the eighties was decadence. The eighties was money, so much money, you know, latchkey kids, all of us people, Gen X were at home, you know, watching cartoons and, and fending for ourselves in some ways as our parents were out there basically planning for this freaking day for 2020 to happen. And I'm just like, holy shit. And so then when I look at university education, I look at people who are professors in universities and they're so high off on their little freaking you know, they're just on their high horse thinking that they're God. And I'm seeing these doctors that think they're God and think they're God and they're destroying their friends and family with all the antibiotics and all the antibodies and their procedures. And then I'm watching, you know, my, my friends are all in the healing, you know, energy world trying, using these machines on their own bodies, destroying themselves. I'm like, holy crap, the self-destruct programming is so prevalent. And the 1960s really lend itself to all these different cult leaders, the energy healing leaders, the, you know, the, the drugs and, and, and then the, then finally, you know, instead of illicit drugs, now it's like normalized, you know, prescription drugs or you're using the illicit drugs and now it's prescription drugs and, and taking out organs and limbs and, and normalizing all this deviancy stuff. And it's just like our world has gone to hell in a handbasket and what the F, what the F, stay home, do the jilly juice and see if you can weather this storm because this is going to be a storm for however many years, I don't know how long, but we have 7 billion people who have been indoctrinated, like Lisa said, indoctrination. We have 7 billion people that have been indoctrinated and even not everybody, 7 billion people have college degrees, 7 billion people are listening to those with those college degrees that have, that have messed with your body, mind and spirit and they're okay with it. And then they're also implementing the self-destruct button. People are committing suicide. People are harming their children. They're selling off their children into the, the human trafficking world. Okay, it, it, it's not pretty out there. And having a child right now in this society, oh my God, I almost would say, you know, do the diligence and try not to have a kid in this society because you don't know what the hell is gonna be for the next future for, for these children. And if you do have a kid right now in this society, oh, I hope you are strong enough to weather the storms that are coming through for your kid because your kid's going to be a target. And then you as a parent, not knowing what's actually going on, are going to put your kid in a situation that you don't even know. And then all of a sudden you hear, oh my God, my kid's been kidnapped. Oh my God, you know, this, my boyfriend did this and oh my God, oh my God. And you're just like, fuck, you're just like, fuck, you know? So it's, it's really, it's really sad out there. It really is. And the whole thing with the JJ is what I'm saying that, you know, you're not going to be as, as, um, amorous, um, your libido and all of your hormones are going to be calmed down. You're not going to be doing things that are going to cause harm to somebody else because you're very balanced. I have, I have no desire to have a child. I probably could, but, um, I have no desire to have a child. Um, I really just stick to myself and, and my research as far as what's going on in this world and with people understanding Jilly Juice in such a way where I'm not their doctor because I don't want to be your doctor. Have you understand why we have these issues that seeking justice is not going to be the answer because then if you seek justice, you're not really solving the root cause. That's why I'm not, I mean, I'm, a, I'm I mean, I'm, I'm like, it hit me the other day when I realized that, yeah, you know, my mom was really, you know, she's actually was, she experimented on me and I'm one of those fucking whatever, those MK Ultra Illuminati bullshit, you know, child whatever experiments that may, may have been, I may have been a failed experiment or I may have been actual who knows what, given what's going on today. I have no idea what the intention was, but maybe she wanted to see us, see how, um, the experiments to see how you can divide and conquer uh, two people because two people can represent two factions. I mean, when you have the Democrats and Republicans, you have a sister and a sister, 
and you basically create situations to where one has to rise up or create situations where one will try to cannibalize the other, who is going to be the one to cannibalize it? Just like watching mice, you know, when you program mice to, to, to fight each other or cock fighting or dog fighting, and you're betting who's going to win and who, you know, and who's going to be the survivor and all this. That's, you know, so when I figured that was going on and why my sister and I don't really have a close relationship because of all that, and I've tried to to figure out a way, but, you know, the, the programming with, with my sister is run deep. And so I, I just leave it alone. But, um, but I'm not mad because, you know, my, my mother will, will deal, will deal with her own demons. She, she's by herself. Okay. She's, she'll deal with her own demons and I'm not anyone's, you know, karma. I don't want to be anyone's karma. That's not my job. My job is to take care of me, to make sure that I'm okay. And if I can at least give you guys a word of warning of, of be careful of academia, be careful of university, be careful of research and development in, in cancer research and biotechnology, be careful of psychology. Think twice before you send your kids off to a psychologist or a psychotherapist. Be careful of all of these different family agencies. You know, they they make things worse, okay? And I wouldn't be surprised that, yes, CPS, you know, we were saying CPS is in child trafficking. I wouldn't be surprised if that's true. I would not be surprised. I don't want to think, I mean, a couple months ago when I'm just like rejecting it all because I don't want to think about that my government and academia are really trying to, not only say they're trying to kill us, but I guess some people could say that, but they want to keep you alive too because they have their own needs that need to be met that they can't do by themselves so they need us so they're trying to control your lifespan okay and it's how do you play the game in all of this how do you play the game well you you buy by the law you find a way to balance out your biochemistry so whatever they do whether it's in the vaccines and whether or not you've been exposed to a vaccinated person that sheds you'll be able to still withstand the storm okay when 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 they are trying to when they're telling you what they're doing you must understand and heed the warning and find a way to balance out your biochemistry and yes you may have been a victim of something that happened in your childhood but it's not the end all be all you can purge out that trauma you can fix those issues that caused you to go into specific directions that have been like a self-destruct and you don't have to self-destruct you don't have to commit suicide you don't have to turn to drugs, alcohol, sex as a way to anesthetize you from the pain of what you went through as a child or as an adult. OK, and so that's the whole point of Jilly Juice is not to seek justice, but to understand what drives people. So that way you can then fix yourself so you don't contribute and carry on that 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 behavior in an like automatic pilot, because you see in some families it's automatic pilot. They carry on the same behavior of their of their parents, pass it on to the kids, the kids pass it on to the next generation, next generation. That's why you don't see too much change in humanity because of the imprints that have not been um, purged out, okay? And then regenerated, you know, the body regenerates itself. And then you don't have those types of uh, deviant behaviors because it's not something you're working with anymore. You have now dealt with, with you know, PTSD and all of that. Okay, so no, I'm not angry at all at my parents. I won't have a relationship with my mom anymore. That's for damn sure, because there really is no relationship. And so, but if I could just, you know, give you guys some advice and some insight on what is going on on a larger scale, maybe you might consider j -Juice. Maybe you might consider, you know, uh, understanding it and and those of you that are in those industries, well, if you're in biotech, they're not going to prescribe or even consider indefinite life because the very nature of biotech is how do you control your body, mind, and spirit at the micro level and then, you know, use you for 20 years, maybe 10 years relative to their intention and then throw you away. And that's it, because that's what you're seeing right now. You see people are like, oh, yeah, I'm OK with dying. I don't care. I'm, gonna get, I'm prepared to die at 80 years old. And that's the death programming. That's the self-destruct programming. You know, they use you for 10 years. Maybe you're a trucker, maybe you're a landscaper, maybe you're in psychotherapy world, biotech, and they've used your brains and they've used your body to build up nations and to um, contribute to their intellectual think tanks. And now that, you know, you're you're old and you're done and you're not regenerating, well, they don't need you anymore. And so 
that's when you're thrown from the freedom train okay and i see that programming all around me i mean it's so normalized that people think people should die that that is part of the university education that's part of the mainstream media that's part of the movies that's part of the books and tv and all that oh yeah you know my bucket list my bucket list we're gonna die we're gonna die everyone's gonna die blah, blah, blah. okay and maybe it doesn't have to be that way so that's why i say be very careful of university education if anything get a trade because you need people to know how to build a house you need you need people to know how to do the plumbing and the climate control and um the growing and the farming and all of that we don't need more people to mess with people's body, minds, and spirit. And that's what California is known for, is how do you mind control body, mind, and spirit? You know, through major, you know, major psychological operations that have been now put out there for the masses. So even people who are in like, like Ohio, which is a very blue collar state with few, a few patches of, you know, white collar stuff, but, you know, all of the, the think tanks and the mind control and the bio control happens, you know, in, 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 on the West Coast and East Coast. And yes, we have Ohio State University, Cleveland Clinic and, and all these different um, hospitals that are taking cues from the R&D, from the research and development labs that, you know, are part of academia. Part of the CIA, too, is part of your government, you know, DARPA and and you know god all these different institutes and foundations i mean it goes so deep and then you're seeing our politicians are part of this and you're seeing them part of different you know government agencies so it's it's a very wide web network of um of this destructive programming and control mind and body control so body mind and spirit control and let me tell you even the energy spiritual healers too just so you know they're not they're not immune to all of that because that's where a lot of the 1960s per developed a lot of these cult leaders that are in the, the energy healing world and they're playing with energy and playing with electricity and energy to uh, stop evolution in your body. You know, when you have antibodies that are so proliferate in, um, in uh, chemotherapy and in cannabis and in the antibiotics and all the different remedies that are in the holistic allopathic world when antibodies are the first and foremost when you're seeing cnn talk about antibodies and antibiotics and the vaccines they're trying to yes control your lifespan how much is too much and how much is to how little is too little and how can we kind of balance it out and then let you just basically pass on when you're not absorbing enough of the right nutrients uh, uh, to help release the excess antibodies and all that stuff so that's why jelly juice is so important to understand is that you can overcome that kind of programming and yes the salt anyone that demonizes salt is trying to demonize life because salt is life but it's not just the salt it's also with the probiotics which is the lacto fermentation the lactobacillus the lactic acid and then the cabbage and the kale that has been broken down to a pre-digested state so your body can absorb it and then it's when you feel the healing that's when you're purging out the excess that's when you start seeing your mind change, your body, your body, mind, and spirit change, and then you start being awake to all of this shit and you get it at the micro level, as well as the macro level. And then you don't take part in the self-destruct programming that is going on right now before your very eyes. So, you know, I've, I've now I've finally seen it. I mean, I guess, am, am, am I healed? I don't know. I just know that I've dealt with some demons right here on Facebook. You guys have seen me dealt with some demons. I fought demons, I've dealt with demons, I've done away with the demons. Um, and that's kind of what you guys are gonna have to go through when you're doing the jelly juice. I have no idea what happened in your world. I have no idea what predispositions, what PTSD you've ever experienced. But if you ever have and, and you don't know or you don't remember, it might come up for you, okay? And don't be afraid of it. Deal with it the best you can. I can't tell you not to go see a doctor if it's too much for you, but if any type of healing is too much for you, go see a professional. But I'm just gonna say, be very careful seeing psychotherapists and psychologists and all of that because of the very nature of what they do. They basically implement a self-destruct programming that will still have you assimilate to current society, but still you know, have you redirect your anger, not at the other person, but redirect it right back at yourself. So you, you got to feel and heal. You really do. And um, if any advice I could tell you is, is, is expect the unexpected.
because this is all fucking unexpected to me. I believe me, I, you know, did not even fathom that I would be talking about pedophilia and having, you know, those types of feelings as a child that I shouldn't have had. And yes, you know, um, when you're taught that boundaries, that it's okay for people to violate your boundaries, even your own family members, you know, when you're taken to nude beaches, okay, and I've seen some stuff at nude beaches, like, holy crap, some nasty stuff, okay, that's what's big back, back in the 1960s, 19, thanks, Barb, 19, you know, any, any time that, 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 that any family member has crossed boundaries, has discounted your feelings and oh i don't want you know when when i we had to get our hair cut we had to take off our shirts outside and i'm like there's people you know up over the fence kids playing and we had to take off our shirts outside i mean you know when you're 12 years old you don't want to be showing off your little boobs to other people you know that's the shit that that people don't realize that that that, that they don't know that someone has crossed their boundaries when 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 the parents have done things to them that they think it's okay but they feel it's wrong but they don't know how to how to speak and that's what happens. And so did I even think that this is going to happen, happen to me? Well, I knew it happened, but I just thought it was like, oh, it's, no, it's okay. I, I can handle it. I can, oh, whatever. But no, but no, um, some shit's going to come up for you guys if, if it hasn't already. But this was many layers deep, many, 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 many. And so my mom did a number on both my sister and I, where I didn't even know that I was, I was abused as a child like this. Where I was like, yeah, yeah, they abused us, but uh, you know, she was abused too. And uh, you know, what the hell? What the hell? So I'm saying, you know, do the best you can to face your demons because I'm telling you, it's not easy. And the the layers can go deep, can go very deep. And some people don't have what it takes to face their demons. And that's why I say not everyone's gonna understand J Juice. Not everyone's gonna have the the the, the strength to face whatever they went through, whatever it is. OK, whether it's cancer, whether it's that guy that, that tried J juice, that was the, the, the hospice patient. Everyone's saying, oh, yeah, Julie, Julie juice killed this guy, Bruce Wilmot. No, he was in hospice. He had pancreatic cancer. He had a whole host of issues that he had to deal with. You know, I mean, and obviously he didn't he couldn't handle facing the pain. OK, when you're at hospice doing J juice, it's almost too late because you're gonna have to face so many demons and it's so painful. You know, with me, it was layers and layers and layers and layers and layers of being pulled back. Layers and layers and layers of being pulled back. And so this was not what I expected for me as far as my healing process. And, I, that, and I'm sure those of you who've been watching me are like, oh my God. <laughs> This took a left turn really quickly. Oh, it hasn't been quick. It's been layers. And the thing with with this 2020, why it's such a crazy awakening for all of us, because yeah, when you're when you're instilling when you're inducing fear in a population, when you're changing their everyday, you know, movements, when you're threatening scarcity of survival, you're gonna see so many things come to surface that people are gonna act out. And they're going to act out things that are that were so behind that were so below the surface, and then you're going to start seeing deviant behavior. You're going to start seeing people just start like you know coming forward, and and then you know the things that we've been talking about in the conspiracy world, which I was a part of for many years before I had to reject it, so I can really understand myself. Um, it's finally being proven true, okay? So, you know. <sighs> This is this is deep. This is very deep. And and that's why I know that if you know, I don't expect that my sisters will understand where I'm coming from with this. I don't think they're gonna do the dilly juice because I think they've been so anesthetized with their lifestyle that facing the demons would probably destroy them. Okay. Um and so that's the things you gotta you gotta figure out. That's why when you look at the jelly juice and drink the juice and you understand it, you gotta figure out is this juice really going? Are you gonna stick with it long enough to be able to face the demons and overcome them? Because one thing to face the demons, it's another thing to overcome them and move on and understand that you know that that it's just whatever happened to you as a kid as an adult, whatever. It's 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 like. You're dealing with people who are on a death programming. You're dealing with people who are deviant. You're dealing with people who who don't.
don't know morals, but know how to strategize how to get by in society. When you know morally the surface of society, you're not supposed to do this, but find a way to justify doing it, you know, on the underground. Okay, so I know my mom knew what she did was wrong. I know because it was never spoken of. Um, she'll never apologize. And I've asked her even for things that I didn't talk about. She would never apologize. Um, and I don't expect it. I don't even want it. It doesn't even make a difference to me because I know what I've developed. And I knew I, de I developed the diligence without a college degree. I, I, and that was the thing that I wanted to prove is that I can actually be a smart person and know how to comprehend information without somebody telling me what to do. And I can think of things on my own without somebody guiding my thought process and telling me exactly what to do every minute of the freaking day. That I can actually develop something that actually works and that has helped me overcome my PMDD as well as my fucking childhood. And that is right there, that is reward enough. I don't need justice and nobody should seek justice if, if they can't handle having it come to surface again. Because, I mean, how, how much of amount of money or, or, or bringing up everything to surface again, is that worth? Wouldn't you want to heal your body at the micro level and just move beyond it and develop yourself in a different way? Okay. And that's, you know, what's, what's, what's so important about Julie Juice is you developing your sense of self and your sense of being and your sense of, of goals and sense of, of respect for yourself, as well as respect for your child and respect for the people around you in your neighborhood. Okay. If we don't understand that it happens at the micro level, we're going to keep continuing with this, this revolution of, of deviancy. You know, when you hear about the Freemasons that they were once prolific and then they were drove underground and now they're prolific again. I mean, ah, whatever, but the people need to speak, but what are you speaking from? I mean, so we don't want a mass killing out there. We don't want anybody hurting each other. But we have to understand where it all comes from so we can actually redirect it and then but i you know i'm up against a whole lot i'm up against the university system i'm up against, up against the government i'm up against people's brainwashing i'm up against people's self-destruct programming it's not easy okay it's not easy so you know if, if i can just impart any words of wisdom stay with the j juice face your demons and analyze whether or not you think you're strong enough look at your past and look at what you've dealt with and see is can you handle revisiting all that again but at least now it's not going to be redirected back at you you're actually able to purge it and release it in the toilet and gone away and then you'll, you'll re then you'll regenerate and then you can move on to whatever it is and and look at the beauty in life not the the horrific stuff in life so you're seeing my my pin back the layers and and facing the demons and so i put my money where my mouth is okay and so if i could be yeah like i, like I said if i could be some kind of example for all of you in whatever you got to deal with i'll be that example and i just you know give you guys a lot of credit for understanding jay just those that are doing it and for those of you that are survivors lisa you know and now it's time to heal you know it's, it's surviving is one thing now it's time to actually heal and seal at the micro level. We don't want to assimilate to it. We don't want to accept it as like it's a normal. No, what what we went through as children is not normal, and it was done by people who have major major issues. And then those people are now in our high levels of government in academia teaching your children. So that's why I'm saying be very very careful sending your kids off to these universities, and even the school system. I would say is is it can be rather dangerous too. But what are you going to do? You have no other choice. You can homeschool. Okay, fine. But some of you are too busy for that. And I understand that. you got to survive. You have a job and all that stuff. So so if anything, my last word on this, be careful of university. It's run by deviants. And your kid could inevitably be in somebody's nefarious hands, being a minion for something that is destructive to not only you, but to your neighborhood as well as your country. And, you know, just be very careful. All right. Bye.